So now I'm aboard an Innocenti small 500. Uh, Innocenti is an Italian company and they used to build minis and uh, 1100s and even Allegro's under license in Italy in a tie-up with British Leyland and they got fed up with um, the original mini so they repackaged it as a small tiny little hatchback and this is quite a late one uh, by which time they've replaced the mini engine with a Daihatsu one sounds like a Daihatsu but it feels like a Mini. The pedal box is straight out of a Mini. It's only a 660cc engine but it doesn't feel an awful lot slower than my nipper to be honest. It's left hand drive so I'm struggling a bit. It's been a while since I've driven a left hand hooker. That's it, we've made it to 100 kilometers an hour, which is about 62 miles an hour. Oh, that's quite a... This isn't bad at all. Oh, I can imagine driving this round the uh, mean streets of Italy. So these later interchanges have actually had the um, wheelbase lengthens to allow a bit of leg room in the back because the repackaging didn't work all that well. They were very tight for space, but it did have a proper hatchback. And for a time, British Leyland did look at building the Innocenti in the UK as a rebuilt car. Uh, in the end, they ultimately decided not to do that. It's a bit of a shame, but instead they decided to go ahead with the Austin Metro, which um, problematic as it may have been in some ways was a much better bet overall. Quite weird, I'm not used to talking to you from this side. I apologise for the sunlight. The driving position is slightly offset, there's a lot of wheel arch intrusion and this car is wider than a standard Mini I think, so the pedal box is kinked right over and the brakes are terrible. I don't think the brakes should be that terrible. Oh yeah, that feels very mini-esque. So it feels like a mini to drive, but obviously doesn't sound like one at all. I quite like the idea of a Mini with a Daihatsu triple in it. There were some companies in Japan that would take a Daihatsu mirror and put a Mini front end on it. So this is a bit more the other way. This is putting a Daihatsu into a Mini. Yeah, the ride isn't too bad at all. It hasn't got that classic mini bounce. I'm going to have to find out what the suspension setup is and I'll report back in the text on this video because it feels very different. It feels very refined. This is better than the nipper. This is extraordinary. And the dashboard, I've got wood across it. I mean, that's quite posh, isn't it? Remarkably jazzy seats. Oh, I was going to take that turn. Woo! Humpback bridge. which um, primarily shows my reflection so I can't see any of the dials. Novel. Pull over here and we'll have a proper look around the car. So, so here we are, the dashboard of many reflections and some random switch gear here for things like the rear wiper and um, the front wiper is done by this column store. Let's see what that's like. Oh, that's good. 
Oh, it's a bit slower than a Fiat Panda one. Uh, more switch gear down there. Lovely wood. And then we've got the seats. Look at that. Jazzy, jazzy, jazzy. Uh, let's get out and have a look around the car. Oh, it's a bit windy, I'm sorry. The bonnet tips forward to give access to the Daihatsu engine. Quite a sharp looking thing. And then here at the back, we've got the actual hatchback. Right, here we go. By the time this car was built, which as you can see is a 1993 on an L plate, De Tommaso actually owned Innocenti, um, builder of fabulous sports cars. But ultimately, it was pretty much the end for Innocenti. After making its own sort of mini based things for so long, um, it was just overtaken by other companies which is a bit of a shame because this is a fantastic little car I can't believe how good the ride is it's an entertaining little road isn't it oh there's a peregrine falcon out of the way Where am I going?